All right, welcome to the Marketing Workshop Thursdays. Again, every week at noon, we go through the updates and news on the top marketing tools, as well as changes in the um, space of social media, as well as Discord and community marketing. We are joined again today by Liam Scott, our social media expert at Triba, and he is gonna bring us some of the updates and news, and then we'll talk about what's working right now and take some questions and answers from the audience. If you have anything you want us to check out or you have some input, questions, put them in chat. If you're watching us on the stream, hop into Discord at discord.gg slash Triba, or go check out our website. It's live right now, triba.community. And we got on there all the things that you can do, uh, links to the different resources, as well as a list of our verified Triba service providers, uh, including Liam and some of the other guys who do branding, pitching, web hosting. You can go check it out and get gold verified if you want. Get a little badge here on the top right of our server, as well as get access to a bunch of service discounts for those, basically allowing your startup or your venture to go to the next level without spending thousands and thousands of dollars or going to Fiverr and getting ripped off. A better Fiverr. It's only $8 a month, but you get access to thousands and discounts from these guys who are verified in the community. They do a great job. We can guarantee that. So go check it out. Also in the top left of our server, you have to be on desktop though to see that. So download the Discord app. I would recommend using it that way. You can also do browser, but again, download the app, check it out. And uh, let's get rolling with the marketing updates, Liam. Welcome. Yeah, hi everyone. Nice to be back. Um, I'll share my screen. Sam, let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, let me let me pull it up here. Uh, yeah, so Liam, where are you hailing from right now? I know you you travel around sometime, but are you still are you in Spain right now? I'm in Spain. Today okay. I'm at San Roque. Uh, I know Tavall actually knows San Roque. It's in the south of Spain, close to Gibraltar. Super ah. south. What okay. are you doing there? So yeah, I told you the first time I met you, I think I have family here. Like my parents live here. So I come visit here all the time. Where is your home base then? Malaga. That's are, where you I live. Go, are you gonna go to the Alameda today? I was there like half an hour ago, you know? Dropping <laughs> off my brother. <laughs> are you... Nice. Your screen share is on your um the Discord right now. There, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Wait, Liam, real quick. There, uh, you know that bar Torres? It's right there, like across the street. Yeah, bar Torres. Yeah. Yeah, that was my um, my grandpa's dad. Who oh, they nice. killed? Who they killed him in the Civil oh. War? So. Oof. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, anyway, it's, it's a little fun fact. <laughs> yeah. Right, it's a popular bar. It gets full all the time. A lot of old people go there and have a. Think and smoke. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I'll start you off with the news of the week. Um, I'll start. I tend to do like smaller news and then a last bigger news, but uh, we'll, we'll change it up this week. And the biggest news is TikTok uh, insider, you know, employees and people collaborating with Forbes. Um, and I just explain how TikTok has a button that you can push called heating. And it will kind of just guarantee that a video will go viral. And this is manual. It's not automatic. There's no algorithm that says, okay, this video is doing well, so we're going to push it more to this audience. No, it's a button. So I'm an employee at TikTok or ByteDance, and I want this video to reach more people. Press button, boom. Guaranteed million views, whatever. Bada bing, bada um, boom. It's being so many issues. <laughs> Especially <laughs> a lot of like pushing certain narratives or certain stories. TikTok's different in every country. I mean, is this just for the US? Is it for everyone that's using TikTok that's not in China? Um, what what are you know the people at TikTok trying to push? Are they trying to push funny videos? I doubt it. Probably trying to put some other uh type of videos. And the explanation they kind of gave over this is just oh, we're just trying to make sure that the videos are equally distributed. Hmm. There's a lot of people watching this, a lot of people watching that. That's kind of the explanation. And I just want to leave it there. I, I let, let it sit with you and see if you're comfortable with it. I don't think any social media platform should have a button that just guarantees something will go viral. Um, that right. feels very manufactured to me, not healthy. Um, 
you know, and I know they're trying to push a quality of content and whatnot, but at the end, it's kind of, you got to give the market what they want. If they want to watch memes a lot or certain type of videos, you give them that. You can't you know, just push certain videos just so there's some equality on that. Because it's social media, you know, it's not, it's not real life. You, there's, <laughs> there's different ways to consume content. Um, I don't know, the, the story doesn't sit right with me. Actually, I was going to ask you, Tovella, I'm sure you might have some better thoughts on this. What, what do you think about it? Um, well, I'll leave out like the geopolitical aspect, but, uh, the, it's like the same thing, you know, that legacy news does, right? Like they kind of just curate, you know, what gets broadcast to the masses, right? So it's kind of the same problem of the past rather than ideally the organic distribution of, um, information and free flow of information versus like the engineered flow of information and you know there's big differences in the way ByteDance and tencent and like chinese tech um governance would do that than you know american tech companies um and even in the american tech companies there's like a, a lot of debate about how that should be done and moderation and censorship or whatever so um mm -hmm. I think it brings a lot of the problems of legacy media, um, but I do understand that it's like a strategic tool they could actually exploit for any, you know, syndication reasons, whether it be financial, political, or anything in between. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a fantastic tool to have such a big platform and being able to push a certain type of content or story to all of those people. Um, I'd like to see how they respond to this. So, um, are they going to keep the button? Is it going to be an actual thing? They already like explained, oh, you know, we do have the button, but it's for these reasons. So, they kind of already admitted that. Uh, but what's next? Is it even going to change? Are people going to care in a week? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, we'll keep following this story. Um, is this a paid a thing? Manager... Is this a paid thing? What do you mean? No, it's a uh, like insider service. So, if you work at TikTok. I guess some group of people can decide, oh, we need to make sure this goes viral. Ah, know? the Communist Party. <laughs> Potentially. Literally. Uh, this... Yes. Uh, let's say so, yeah, basically. Um, yeah, as a social media manager that kind of relies just on good content goes to good people. I know Mr. Beast also likes that, and that's the whole story. You know, you work with, you want to make sure that the best content is pushed to people. And it'll get pushed not because someone pressed the button, but because the content's amazing. Um, this is not cool. I do not like this. I hate it. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I'll keep following it. Um, yeah, we, we have some other news with TikTok too, actually. We, we've seen them kind of expanding into different things. We saw them have long form videos. Uh, they also changed that uh, you could now watch videos horizontally and vertically. Um, and now they're trying a new podcast feature. So basically, it's kind of like we've all wanted YouTube to do. Um, so when you're listening to a music or you're watching a podcast on YouTube, when you exit the app, if you're watching on YouTube, it will just cut the sound. TikTok has, for some users, just kept the sound running. So if you're watching a podcast on, you know, tweet, I mean, on TikTok and it's a one hour long podcast, whatever, and you want to exit the app to check your emails, you'll still be able to hear the podcast. Um, this has been to a small segment of people, as usual. They test very small. Um, we'll definitely see it very likely broaden out as the weeks go by um it's a cool feature it's cool um it seems like tiktok's really tapping into all the video marketing i mean all the video like ways they can post so it's not just short content now they're also for focusing on vertical or horizontal content they have you know podcasts going on they have podcast clips you have shorts it's a lot going on um yeah as usual we'll see how it plays out um i know if they they're gonna You'll be able to publish podcasts. A lot of the people that run podcasts, even us, we can publish full episodes onto TikTok. And since it's a bit easier to get you know, views on TikTok, I can imagine every main podcast being on TikTok. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe Bergen or us, uh, every main podcast or us too. Um, you know, the game, any podcast that kind of wants to reach more people, I'm, I'm sure they'll be on TikTok. Um, I like to see how the algorithms work. Will the button also, you know, push certain podcasts more than others? I don't know. I, I like to see it kind of plays out. Um, okay, now going on to ChatGPT. I know there's been a lot of hype about it. People talk about it a lot. 
Um, Google's definitely a bit worried about it. Uh, actually, they've announced over, I think, the last couple of weeks, maybe last month, that they're working on 10 different AI programs. Uh, they've been working on AI a bit more, of course, like over the past last years. Um, but just ChatGPT just got a lot of attention from the general public. Uh, they're kind of, you know, alarmed, uh, alarmed that they a bit slower on, you know, the developing and working on some of these. Um, and I was actually talking to you about this, Sam, a couple yeah. days ago. But a lot of people are using ChatGPT as Google. Yeah. So instead of Googling something, you use ChatGPT it. Because there's less noise, less distractions. You kind of just get the results. Then, of course, you got to just proofread it and make sure, okay, this, this actually is accurate. Um, tons of people are using it. Even me included. I've been using it for a lot of just Googling. And they definitely caught on to that very quickly. So they're working on their own AI software that, you know, will be partnered with the search engine. So when you're searching stuff or something, I'm guessing there'll be like an AI button or a short reply when you're searching. Um, yeah. Dude, this is a pretty hot topic. Uh, yeah, Chad GPT. Yeah, I've noticed, I mean, maybe it's just because I've been talking about it a lot, but I get news pop up on my phone all the time. Uh, I use Google News. So obviously... It's all positive stuff, except for some stuff about people using it uh, for cheating on their education, which is a problem. <laughs> Aside from that, though, I think it's like a far better Google. If you if you really think about what it's doing, you're getting the, the cumulative knowledge you get from searching on Google minus all the ads and promotions. So when you go to Google, you know, the first couple are going to be ads and then like the first page you probably are just going to get people who paid thousands for SEO or something um, to get on that first page. It's not necessarily the best content or or even accurate content half the time. So I like ChatGPT because we can ask it something like uh, I can ask it something like write out a launch campaign for a subscription model for you know March and plan out the steps give me actionable items and it will do all of that instead of searching for how do you launch a subscription model and getting 5,000 promoted paid courses and advertisements on Google or YouTube. It's just, it's simpler. I think it's the future of how we find information. I think there's the decentralization that happens in discords and you get people sharing different tools that aren't paid promotions. And then you also get chat GPT giving you, a, a broad sweep of all the knowledge and information put together into, you know, an algorithm you can use at your fingertips. And they're, they're actually already working on chat GPT four, which is going to be like orders of magnitude, more powerful. Not only does it have all the training data of all the users right. that just started using it. Um, but they can also ungate it where it's not like just data from 2021, but it can actively be like mine live internet stuff. Hmm. Um, and just on the marketing and business side, I, I just used it yesterday because we're working on our mobile app for the app store and like some promotional materials and yeah, it created the promotional text and description and, and with its features and functionality, like very easily. And it's very good. You just have to imagine what it'll do for video or advertising or, you know, all that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it'll be crazy to see how it develops. Um, we have a, a bunch of AI tools that also are launching this year that look amazing. I think we could eventually even have just one hour event where we just kind of go over AI, like some of the concerns and whatnot, but yeah. also some of the great tools that are out there. Um, because there's so many, and yeah. they're kind of just getting better by the minute. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the comments if you guys want to do an event like that, and you can hop in and share what you think AI is going to be useful for in business development and marketing, investment strategy, whatever you think. I mean, we know Synergy, Dr. Yeetum, he uses AI as well for pulling together the best information and making it available. So there's that, there's the mid journey bot, which we have in our AI art channel. You can create basically anything you can imagine. Um, I've seen a lot of people like uh, Roberto from the VR networking group, he uses that to make his uh linkedin posts and they're they're pretty good they're pretty good images you can kind of tell their chat or i mean they're they're ai generated sometimes there's a little little things here and there that give it away but there's a lot of potential here it's really cool and, the, and they'll keep getting better too like you, you can kind of tell sometimes now when some things are ai made uh but 
it's kind of getting better. The voices, the people, the text. I've, I've, I mean, I'm sure I've been reading tons of tweets that are made by AI that I think are possibly just made by a guy, you know, writing. Um, yeah, I guess at some point the idea is to get indistinguishable, like, okay, this was person made, this was AI made. Um, very interesting. It's kind mm -hmm. of concerning too. <laughs> I feel like most marketers, a lot of us are kind of concerned about it. Um, no, I think it's just... Are. It's going to take some people's jobs who don't know what they're doing and they just use the same thing everyone else has been doing. But I think for the most part, it's going to empower marketers to do more. I don't know. I mean, we're finding ways to use these tools to speed up production, which in turn, the efficiency allows you to do more and charge less and still make more profit. So if you use them correctly... For example, like the, the system that I put together for creating these clips and the content you're seeing on TikTok and Instagram, if you're watching there, that all has to do with AI and algorithms that pull the best moments and then we edit them, caption them, distribute them across all the different channels very easily in the cloud. And that tool speeds up production so much that we can offer it at a very low price for the businesses. and they can put out more clips and content which brings them more revenue which means we can even charge more for our services so in turn i think it's going to do a lot for the business community but it is going to take some jobs for people who don't know what they're doing and they don't know how to use tools or they're not on the cutting edge so you want to be on the cutting edge get in triba we talk about this stuff we figure out how to use it effectively yeah that's an interesting perspective actually instead of trying to compete with it you just kind of Add it to what you do. Exactly. Just make what you do better. It's the collaborate, don't compete model. True. Sure. Interesting. Good perspective. You've, you've changed my way of thinking some. <laughs> um, actually, okay. Um, well, we also have some news on Instagram, actually. But to those who don't know, Adam Mosseri is the CEO of Instagram. It's not Mark Zuckerberg's Adam Mosseri. Follow him on Instagram, by the way. He has tons of great tips if you're an influencer or business. He's like the best social media manager because he has all the info. Um, nice. And yeah, on one of his Q&As, I think last week, uh, he does one every week. He kind of just admitted that, oh yeah, we definitely pushed way too many videos in 2022, which is something tons of users that aren't posting reels were saying like, you know, I'm posting still great pictures, great ourselves, uh, but they're getting like, not at all good reach, you know? At this point, it just kind of makes sense to post my pictures as a reel and they'll get more views and more engagement. And yeah, he kind of admitted it. We, they definitely went a bit over um, on reels in 2022. Um, so they kind of, the idea, and of course this is kind of subjective, but the idea is that now they're gonna try to make everything a bit even. So if you're posting pictures, they're going to push them more than what they were being pushed before. And reels, they're gonna try to keep at where they were at or lower potentially, um, so beat less reach. Um, a lot of this is just kind of algorithm talk. I, I really like the Mr. Res, Mr. Beast perspective on this, which is just make good content and algorithms are always gonna favor that. You know, if the people wanna watch the content, they're gonna push mm -hmm. that regardless if it's a picture of a, or a reel. Um, of course, there's different ways to distribute it. Like if you're gonna make great content and you can post it as a picture or a reel, maybe go for the reel, you know? Um, a lot of this, I don't know, I don't feel like you should uh, hyper obsess over it. But hey, if you stop posting pictures, get back to it. Uh, they're going to they're gonna try to boost that a bit more this year. Which is good news for a lot of uh, artists that also were complaining about, you know, now we have to do reels, we can't post art or blah, blah, blah. Um, good news for you. <laughs> and that's kind of where I was going to end. Um, Discord, I was, um, Sam, I'm not sure if you want to report on this. This was yeah, January 17. Um, because I'm also reporting some news from last week. So Discord acquired a company called Gas. Uh, so I'm not sure if you know about it. Uh, I just saw that. I didn't really look into it much. That was last week. At January 17th. But since last week, I we didn't do the, uh, you know, the podcast. I thought it would probably be mm -hmm. good to share. Uh, I think all of us here love Discord, so it's interesting to see what they're up to. Um, and I think it kind of went under the radar because that's kind of what it is. It's an under the radar you know, app. So Discord acquired a company called Gas. Um, and Gas is basically an app for teenagers. Um, it's not meant for a 30-year-old, 20-year-old to be using it. It's like 17 and under. 
just to kind of ask questions to people anonymous, anonymously. This is something a company called Ask FM tried a couple years ago. I actually remember having an account with them. And it's kind of just a way for you to ask different people in school different questions anonymous, anonymously. Uh, this is great for teens because teens kind of like that. You know, when, when you're an adult, you're, you're not exactly interested in, you know, Sam, I'm not going to ask you a question anonymously. I'll just ask it straight up. Um, but of course, when you're younger, maybe you want to ask a girl or a boy, you want to ask him whatever. It's kind of that aspect of being anonymous a lot of people like. And yeah. that's kind of all gas is. Um, it's a great way to ask questions. Is They even have an example here, like who's the best DJ with the best smile? Then a lot of people can also vote. Um, their poll feature apparently is pretty good. A lot of people use polls in gas. Um, yeah, if, I'm, I'm not exactly sure with how the whole gas thing works, but I'm guessing it, adds, so it has advertisements. Um, if, if you're advertising to kids or younger, you know, teens, um, definitely give it a try. Make sure you're following all the legality around advertising to minors. Um, but yeah, if you're advertising to younger people, literally, there there'll be tons here, <laughs> and that's specifically the target uh, gas has. So if you're trying to sell to younger people, give it a try, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you have some success with it. But just definitely have an eye on that legality issue. You know, uh, make yeah. sure you know using certain words or certain images that are not ideal. Um, same with products or services. Make sure they're all, you know, teen friendly. And that kind of wraps up the news. Well, not um, not not, not entirely hasn't... the social media side of things, but we can get into the Discord more. Uh, I guess if you're gonna stop your screen share, I'll start my screen share. Um, Discord acquires gas. Yeah, I was just looking into some more articles. You know, Discord raised 100 million in 2020, and it's expanding out of gaming. That was its main focus in the last two years is creating stuff like events and i think they're really tailoring to the business community they're targeting non-gaming creators uh and i think that is why they bought gas partly to go down in a like generational marketing a lot of these teens just aren't spending a whole lot of time in discords but they're they're communicating with like snapchat and the biggest thing i see on snapchat with the younger generation is asking stupid questions or or you know, asking a poll or vote on who's the hottest. And I think that's what gas is more about. I love how their gas talks about like, uh, see who, see who likes you. Yeah. It's all about positive, encouraging, good. uplifting. That was what I was reading. Anonymous compliments and positive affirmations, or as your, as the kids say, gassing your friends up. But I think, you know, it might be more akin to gas lighting, you know, we were talking about what is gaslighting the other day, and it just turned into a massive gaslighting, which I, I kind of just chalk it up to trolling sarcastically. Like, you're not really, it's not necessarily a negative trolling, but it's kind of just like rile you up and get the most uncontrolled version of you. And I'm not really a fan of gaslighting. I, I honestly don't think it's a good thing because you're essentially pushing people outside of their their comfort zone to a point in which they lose control of themselves that's the, the i don't think it's as much just hyping people up like it's saying on here i think it's more of pushing people and and emotions igniting the fire so maybe that's some good sometimes you know you have a whole bunch of fans getting this one girl doing her tiktok and instagram so hyped up and pumped you know she wants to make more and more content that that's great i mean sure but i think sometimes this will just turn into a giant circle jerk it's interesting to see though how they're expanding gas is previously named the hottest app right now how have i never heard of it i don't oh. know who named them that i think they all to claim to be the hottest app right now yeah, sure the, that's actually awkward. <laughs> the Discord's been doing some really cool things. I mean, if y'all aren't paying attention, they added activities, which are awesome. You can play if you have Nitro, or you can start it if you have Nitro. You can play if you don't have Nitro. But, you know, they also bought, or they uh, didn't buy, but they added in a YouTube integration, which allows you to, like, watch alongside of your friends and stuff here. You can just turn them on. Uh, there's also a Netflix bot now that lets you search, choose, and talk about shows without spoilers figure out what to watch as a group uh 
they also are focusing more on assisting their developers and they've added in actually a whole bot and integration section of the discord let me change my screen here and show you guys what they're doing where's my my discord co-working okay here's the events tab all right so if you look in here on our discord um if you go down all the way to the bottom on the left and you click explore public servers you can see their new explore section but then if you actually go to um, your server, so let's go up to Triba, and you go up to the bots and integrations, app directory, here it is. App directory, I mean, that's a huge addition they put in that lets you find stuff like Midjourney that they're actually putting them up for discoverability. You don't have to go to a third party app site and look at those promoted ones and sponsored ones or whatever. These are just the best ones from the community you can see here, these are a lot of the ones I recommend. SoundCloud, uh, Dino are great ones. There's some in here that I don't even recognize. I haven't tried, but I think that's a really cool way they're trying to expand. Um, oh, there's the Netflix one right there. So you can super, super easily add it to your server. You can look at what it kind of does, listen to or find the available titles, avoid spoilers with threads. Pretty cool. Oh, they got a trailer too. So from a community marketing standpoint, I think this is really cool stuff they're adding that lets you engage with people, get them interacting and hanging out in different channels, maybe start some watch parties or get people to vote on which shows they want to watch. You can also search in different countries to see, you know, this is what I can watch and you can watch. Uh, that's a pretty cool feature and uh, let me know what you guys think. Emma's here as well. What's up, Emma? Um, I, have a, I have a question. Yeah. How many people actually kind of join Discords from having this an echo? Oh, oh, sorry, hold on. Test, test. Okay, there, it's over. How many people join Discords from actual Discord? Because I have, most of the people I've met just kind of look at Google Discord. And that's how they kind of find Triva and they find different servers that are in, you know, in our bubble. But right. People actually, you know, join Discords from, from Discord or? That's a really good question, okay. Liam. I find a lot of people find Discord through the public listing sites that are available. If you search for Discord servers, it'll pop up with Discord.io, Discords.com, Discord all those list different servers, but a lot of them offer premium and sponsored postings. So if you go there and you don't have a target in mind, like I'm looking for Triba or business community, then it'll just give you the list of ones that are paying to have their their name up there at the top. But if you are interested in finding like a, a marketing community or, or a business community or, you know, a Fortnite group, I think Fortnite has the biggest Discord. That's why I mentioned it. You can go on there and type it in and search for them keyword. And then Discord added in its own discovery, like we were just looking at, that lets you search purely based on keywords and topic, the groups that are actually verified as communities. So it's not any server can just put their link up there with five members. You have to have at least a certain amount of members, certain amount of engagement activity. It's very low standard, not nearly as high as it is for the partnership, but it does let you list it on the public listing and gives people a way to find cool communities that have themselves set up to bring in new people, give them the information and the engagement they need. That's what Discord's all about, you know, deeper connections. And I love that feature. I really do. Did Triba, if you look up business community on Discord's public server listing, we pop up first, the very top. And that's actually where we get a lot of our members looking for business Discord. They use it for school fun. And then, look, then they're like, well, I wonder if there's a business community on here. And they type in Tribe or they don't type in tribe, but they just type in business community on Discord's public listings. We pop up, they join there, they go through our onboarding, they get verified. Boom. It's a great way to market your business to a younger audience. Obviously, you're not going to be reaching boomers and you know 30 plus very much, but there are a lot of web three developers and programmers, graphic designers, musicians, stuff like that, people like that in Discord. 150 million 
a lot of them are using the Explorer Discovery, and a lot of those 150 million are looking for business communities. So make sure you get the SEO right. You know, if you're building a Discord, you can't overlook putting it on all the other public listing sites still, because that is a lot of traffic comes from there. Uh, we get a lot of people looking on Google for Discord communities, and then they find articles on Medium. So get people to write articles about your community, review it. We'll throw it in there with a list of different communities if we want to share about you know, a really great group. We'll put it up in an article and backlink to their server. Share the, the valuable communities you find because they are kind of gold nuggets. People like to hear about them. Yeah, that's actually true. I've noticed some communities tend to be 10 times better than others, including Triva. Yeah, put in the um, chat. What, including, oh, I thought you were saying better than Triva. It's like, Liam. No, 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 no I've been honest with you about this. I don't think there's any. I've heard a lot of people come in. Here. Yeah, a lot of people come in to, to Triva. They're like, yeah, we joined the top 10 business discords and then left all of them, but we're still in Triva. So, you know, if you guys find something better or you have a community you really like, it doesn't have to be massive, but drop it in the comments or leave it in the chat. Hop in Discord and share it in one of the channels, the appropriate channels that's specific to that topic. You can't actually share Discord invite links, I should clarify here, but you can come hang out and tell us about it. Don't spam Discord channel invite links. You will get banned. You will get banned. Sam, actually, I have a follow-up question, and this is for the businesses, creators, and then actually for also my client work, so it's a bit of a selfish question. Um, it's okay. Should, it's okay. Who should we aim to have a Discord? Like, who should have a Discord server? Like, mm -hmm. Should most creators have a Discord server so they can access the people? Any is any impact driven business, or? any impact driven business or value based brand should have a Discord community. If they have any digital presence and they want to take their audience into a deeper layer of engagement, where they're actually getting more organic shares, getting more people, bringing in uh, new customers, it's a great way. I mean, you could spend thousands on customer acquisition targeting teenagers, or you can make a Discord and start hosting fun activities for them and then just talking about your product. I think a lot of a lot of communities around values are actually marketing for some business or brand. So you could have a gaming community for a mobile app that, that's for mental health or something. You know, it, it really varies, but you find out what your values and what your target audience wants to see and then you build a community around those values around that vision and empower them to jump on board and participate to support you in that journey so it really it really can be a uh, cross industry to market on discord you get to target a vast network of subgroups that are interest-based so i mean you you have a physical product you hop into a plushies discord or something and talk about your product you know, and maybe it's a cute soft plushie or something or a fidget toy and you're you're talking about it. If there's ten thousand people in there and you're you're talking about it in the general channel, it's a lot of people who are gonna see that and are gonna read that. So I think that plus collaborating with similar businesses, similar uh, content creators, if you're trying to make user generated content, there's not a better way to do it. You can get people to jump on board with that. But you really have to highlight your mission what you're about, talk about it with people and get them interested. So there's an art to it. It's not as easy as just posting or making content, static content, because basically you're operating in real time to to plan out and execute you know, on a weekly basis. It's hard to strategize for the, the out, I guess outbound, what's the opposite of inbound? Is it outbound? The outbound marketing on Discord is, is really weird. But the inbound marketing, you can create a server and work with users coming in to make content. It's really a pretty well-defined process. You see a lot of people doing it now to not even very well, but they're still doing it because it's profitable. If you do it well, it's very, very good marketing. I would, And I would add for anyone that's listening or here that hasn't, is on the precipice of trying to build a business or a brand or figure out, you know, some entrepreneurial activity is it's better to start sooner and later building your brand um, and your vision and this 
community element is a core aspect of not only the deeper awareness and intimacy of like your operation, but it's also the uh, has a compounding effect over the years. So like, right. I would I would highly recommend anyone to start building their brand, building their community. Um, and really you can just mold it around either your personal vision or even like a collective vision or mission uh, that you may already have. have. So. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. Cause you're building your brand authority and your digital presence over time. It really takes time to build it up. People try to fabricate it. It doesn't really work. Everything's pretty open on the internet as much as you can hide behind a layer anonymity as a business entity you don't really have that option and in fact you have to start establishing a track record kind of like uh you know your credit score you have a digital credit score and you have to be contributing value first to be uh noticed to be talked about to be shared so you can't ask somebody to share something if you haven't really contributed first it's a good point to follow Thanks for yeah, sharing that. Yeah. yeah. So what do you guys no, think? But... Questions time. Question and answer time. Michelangelo is here as well. What's up? Hello, Michelangelo. Let's nice read chat. It feels like Everybody. it depended on your it depends on your demographic age, even thirty, maybe forty. I had so much success for making a Facebook group for a business community. Yeah, so Facebook was a great way, is still a great way to reach an older audience. I feel like people just don't look at ads on there anymore, but if you can tap into the group like like Emma did, you can tap into a few different niche groups. That's very similar to what Discord does but for an older group, an older demographic. I honestly yeah. have been breaking more into the LinkedIn stuff, similar idea. Yeah, it's a good point, kind of having the customer intelligence to know who you're targeting. Um, it's hard to get older folks on Discord. It's even harder for just convincing older folks to be more computer savvy in general. Um, it's kind of helpless, hopeless, honestly, sometimes. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah you, can, you cannot even look, look, look at my, wait, is this live or not? This is you're, live, you're, this is live. Sorry. Okay, so okay, I, I cannot say whatever I want. Understand. Okay. Okay. Well, what what I found out about uh, uh, older generation, there are two things that are insurmountable. One of them is screen sharing. I don't know if you had the same experience. Every time you have you had to make somebody screen share who's older than fifty, it takes about three to five minutes yeah. because they cannot find the button which is always <laughs> there, always the same. And now always that same idea. <laughs> The always zoom zoom how do i screen share okay well now they had the genie before you know you clicked a button you had screen share now they added the beautiful idea like discord screen sharing on discord you had to click three times do you know how excruciating it is to explain to another person who does not know how to use the computer on the other end of the computer how to click three times in the correct way it takes about three to five minutes this is true I'm sorry but that is the experience that i have living about uh, like at least five times a week so yep it's very true right, except for yeah, right except for joe and the other thing which i notice and this is the integration of technology that basically tobalo tobalo was saying the there are people for example like you that uh, uh, let's say me journey. The first thing they did is to try out me journey because it's like it's an incredible tool. Yeah. And other people, for example, even bought me journey for them just as a present, and they never even tried it once. And the same with Chat GPT three. We see some people who use the technology right. and are immediately, and other people who just will never use it in until like it's there on Microsoft Word, and they will be forced to use it. Yeah. And until it's pre-installed on their app, pre-installed on their phones. Basically. That's yeah, true. So the, 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 I think the, the issue with the, with Discord, Discord is a wonderful app. Uh, I love it. it. Mostly because of the breakout rooms. You can enter a conversation just clicking on the, on the, uh, on the, on the chat, on the channel, which is absolutely great. I think that that is we compared to the team like team Microsoft Teams that is it's way way faster 
scheduling meetings like this is way faster, but uh, then uh, you have a problem that not many people want to use Discord, which it seems an insurmountable problem still. It is so great, but nobody wants to use it. Yeah, I, it, you know, it's 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 really people not... Not nobody, but, you know, right. Well, I, no, I see it a lot um, in certain, you know, businesses and friends in certain businesses and industries that they just are not, you know, like they're just old school. Um, and it, there's a detriment to that because there's like a latency just for basic tasks or like relaying, you know, a, a task or information or, um, you know, and um, Discord it, for us is... It's not only a professional environment, but it's also like a chill community environment where you network with people who understand the game already, right? Like, I, like it for us that work in IT and cyber or crypto and even finance, um, you know, there's a lot of the people are already on here and they know how to engage deeper on here. Um, you know, and there's kind of a lot of overlap with kind of Twitter in that regard, more of like the fintech or um like financial analysis and all that type of stuff and even like cybersecurity and whatnot so it's way better than not doing it and i you know i was talking to a guy who works at a landscaping business and it's like you know they don't like it would be really easy if you just have like a, a slack channel or a discord channel you know on uh you know a specific project or engagement or you know uh you know focus but even that's too much you know they're just dealing with, like texts or calls or like you know they don't even know how to use their email right so it's pretty funny i honestly think text messaging to reach an older audience over 40 probably the best thing you can do right now is build up a phone list just because the, it's so far behind like when you're trying to reach a a younger demographic it's a changing game but the older groups are so uh it's like an established market right like they're all on text and they all use email so email marketing but now there's so many emails so much spam people will read their text sooner and if you keep it like very very simple and short make it valuable for them to read those texts i think that could be good marketing maybe we should start exploring using the tribe text chain just a maybe even like a weekly or or monthly something. What do you think, Liam? I worked in email marketing for a while with Clavillo, and the SMS campaigns we did were by far some like they had incredibly good open rates. You had of course some people messaging you like, "Why are you texting me? I, I do not care. <laughs> I know this is I don't care. I saw your email." Um, right. You got a lot of those people, but the open rates. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I don't think anyone doesn't open their text messages, especially right. because at least I'm young. I get so few actual text messages like on the SMS. You know, when someone texts me, I'm like, oh, you got to check this out. You know, yeah. the soul. So, um, yeah, and it feels definitely like it's mainly the older folks that are using them. So if you're maybe trying to have a sale for like a product that's targeted into older people, SMS campaigns really sound great i have facebook groups uh i'm not sure i was talking about it before but they're also mm -hmm. i think it was uh emma mm -hmm. fantastic to kind of leverage audience that already kind of likes whatever you're selling and you can just if you can make it smooth you can post there and on reddit like very similar groups the amount of attention you get like in a short period or short period of time organically is fantastic it's great and it's not a text message, so no one's going to hate you. Um, and if you're, you know, within the guidelines of the Reddit, uh, subreddit and the group, you're fine. What kind yeah, of content would you recommend posting on Reddit in those groups? On Reddit, I'm actually running a bit of a Reddit campaign right now. And if it, you want to be extremely genuine, you kind of don't want to make it look like an ad. You want to make it look like an actual Reddit post. Yeah, so I, I read an ad run... today that was like supposedly a story. And I was like, oh, cool. This will be a cool story. And it was just an ad. <laughs> it's just them, <laughs> them just scratching the business. I was, I was like, this is not a story at all. He was like, he wrote it in like a narrative way. He was like, oh, I started working for this business. And now I'm doing, oh, here's what we do. Here's what... <laughs> Try to sell you some... Sorry. Sorry. 
I still read it. Got you. They got me. <laughs> yeah, it's called astroturfing. Um, kind of like a guerrilla marketing strategy. But the, uh, you know, I, I and I heard Mr. Beast talk about it. It's like they were like talking about how you compare Reddit comments and thread yeah. like forums versus like the YouTube comment section. Um, but yeah, Reddit's definitely more of like it has it rewards more thoughtful uh, comments than just you know YouTube kind of trolls. You know, so it, it's it it was interesting how kind of that karma system and the feedback loop of like promoting people to have more thorough thoughtful posting and conversation versus like an environment where it's just you know garbage yeah it just feels you have generic. to contribute to maintaining the quality of content and if you diverge from that like you start just posting blatant advertisements it's not uh, you're just it falls on deaf ears which is why i think these platforms are such gold mines because if you can do the kind of marketing we talk about in tribe the stuff we talk about in collaborative communities and sharing the value you have first it's going to shine it's going to stand out people are going to talk about it and share it but if you do the opposite and you just do shameless shills all the time it's going to fall on deaf ears so there's really an art to this and we're trying to help you with that if you're curious what kind of stuff works for Liam, for me, for the other business guys in Triva, hit us up. You can set up a chat with us in our bios. We have links. Super easy to get in contact. And we love talking about this stuff. So that is yeah. that is also part of why Triba Gold Verified exists, because you can get in contact with us directly. We can help you. Uh, you also get access to back-end channels where we can talk privately and you know, you get you save money as well on all the different guys who offer services. They all give different discounts for Tribe of Verified. I know I right. talked about this a lot, but it really is more of a support thing for Tribe of Two. We gotta pay for Tribe of Server up upkeep maintenance, the subscription tools we use, uh, the premium versions, and yeah, you can help support us and get access to thousand dollars in thousands of dollars in deals. That's it. No more shameless plugging. It is really a valuable thing, though, and this is the kind of stuff you're you're gonna learn about. I'm talking about it right here. I think Emma was gonna talk about topics on Instagram too, just because I know we're getting close to the end of stream. Yeah, yeah. Can we talk about Instagram, Emma? Do you want to turn on your camera or anything? I'm not turning on my camera, but I'll unmute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, do you want me to pull up any links or specific? Look for any uh, I don't articles have here. Any links because I've barely been able to find any content about topics, but I also haven't looked recently. Last time I looked, there was barely anything about it, but I dropped some screenshots that I took the other day while I was posting on uh, co -working. I see. Yeah, I see. Add uh, topics. So is this a new thing that's like easy I hashtags? Have on, I have it on two of my eight accounts oh so, so it's early it's, access feature yeah and so i can go on okay b and i can tag it so say i make a car post i'll tag mm -hmm. it with car culture or cars and trucks but like with what this specific i think this was my account so i just tagged it with like entrepreneurship but um my videos that are tagged with topics are actually performing much better than videos that aren't. Hmm. So I can't go back and tag old videos. But I can tag new videos. <coughs> I want to see if Tribus has it. Do you know if Tribus has it, Liam? I believe we do, yeah. Oh. We... Sweet. Are we using that? I used it for a couple of the posts, I believe. Let, let me double check, though, because I run a very similar page that but so the anyway. topics are feeding into Instagram trying to be more like Pinterest because Instagram's made a bunch of shifts trying to um have their search engine work more like Pinterest's rather than just the hashtags that they've had in the past. And so possibly you've tried to search something up like completely random like say modern bathrooms on Instagram mm -hmm. and you didn't use the hashtag and you found <laughs> oh it actually pulled up and it wasn't just the hashtag that pulled up because now they're actually ranking posts with like your generalized SEO 
top like your guidelines for SEO. Hmm. Generalized yeah, SEO. I don't see it on Tribos. Are you on Checking. mobile or are you on desktop? I'm on mobile. Hmm. See? Am I in the right place? Oh. Yeah, you're in the right place. It It says add people products message button location yeah, add reminder music um, sam i have it then i'm on the tribe account tag people maybe it's because of the device maybe it's below i'm on tribe right now it, it shows it to me are you in an iphone oh i use android what the heck i'm the issue wait is it only it's for reels yeah it's only on reels oh that's yeah. why okay i'm an idiot no, I'm not. I'm not an idiot, but I missed that. I thought it was for any post, so I was looking through this post settings. Not cool like us. I'm cool. I'm in the cool club. I have it. But especially with, like, the topics and just kind of, like, the search engine kind of changing on Instagram, I've had old content start getting more views. Like, the posts that I've spent more time writing an actual caption and maybe <laughs> even providing a little value, which is rare. Extremely rare on my account. <laughs> that content is getting more traffic after I've posted it. Like some of it's eight months old and it's getting more views. So interesting. What that's was all you'll yours? Get from me. Good luck finding it. Emma eleven. No. <laughs> I think Gold Leaf Media, yeah, this one. Is is this the one you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. I love that one. There's Emma's account if y'all want to check it out. Be used following. So is Bravasol. Blue Jay. Nice. Almost a thousand followers on there. Yeah, I gotta buy more bots. <laughs> no bots. No bots. All right. Emma's thoughts on hashtags. Last question. Did you already I answer hashtags, that? hashtags, but I exclusively comment them on Instagram. Really? Because I repost everything on Facebook, and I don't want to go on Facebook and delete them off of Facebook. So I post it, and then I comment it immediately. And so then you... after 24 hours, I'll delete the comment if I really don't like the comment. Interesting. Sometimes I'll even throw in like a specifically spammy hashtag because, like, if I add hashtag NorCal, I'll get five comments of like, oh, promote it on at spam account. And I'll just let them sit there for 12 hours, 24 hours because it's still engagement, even if it's bought. And then I'll delete it after a day. And usually hmm. my post performs better if I keep the spam comments on there algorithm tricks but like question, one of one of the older posts that i've put if you scroll down on my account i think it's huh. like a green leaf background and it was like one of the secondary times an account yeah i think it's that no it's a different one that's pretty cool though uh it's a sim it's like the same format possibly i think i rambled like like a three paragraph ramble on one of those posts and it's one of the best performing posts I've made. Which one? This one? No. This one does have a whole lot of hearts. Well, it's, I don't know, I found the kind of combo of flowers and cats <laughs> at work. Uh, <laughs> A nice mix of flowers and cats. This one? So, um, Emma, when you mean, like, performs well, are you just generally speaking, like, engagement and, like, how far it goes? Or, like, so, is like, there a way you I... monet like, translate that to monetization? Because, okay, so I've only gotten, like, one or two clients off of Instagram and Facebook. My primary source of like referral is either just from my website or word of mouth but um like comparing its reach and engagement like 
because I'm able to see the location of that reach. Like, oh, where's the primary amount of reach coming from? Is it coming from Europe? Is it coming from South America? Because it's not going to be relevant to me, usually, if it's not Northern California, United States of America. And so, if I post, and it's like a local tag, like hashtag Humboldt County is a big one, and I get those spam bots commenting on it, or I use hashtag woman-owned business, that's another huge one that gets a lot of spam comments. If I leave those spam comments on there, it's still considered engagement, and so it still starts referring it to like more people's feeds. And so those posts end up getting way more reach, even though, like, I might delete the comments afterwards and the engagement goes down. Because if you delete a comment, it still, it doesn't count anymore on your statistic when you're looking at, like, your business feed, like, your business insights. And then, B asked, if you're in the top of a tag removing it, would it take you out of that ranking? Yeah, but it's also not as important anymore, because if you add your keywords into your caption and just say like social media management if I'm using social media management as my keyword and I throw that into my caption and then I add that hashtag into my comments when somebody searches up social media management and doesn't bother to put the hashtag in front of it or tap on the hashtag tag like the tag section it's still going to be the top ranking post hmm Unless you're, like, directly relying on hashtags, which a lot of the time aren't even... Unless somebody's following a hashtag or they're just specifically looking at that hashtag, it's not as important. Because usually the best way to get more views and engagement and reach is through the Explore page, which has its own, like, criteria of reaching it more and more and more. I have a question, actually. Okay. Um, for uh, I noticed, for example, Instagram, which is I think is a hideous tool, uh, for for the only reason that uh, like it keep checking on your security. For example, I registered an account like long ago with my company, and the first thing it did when I tried to log into my account, it just banned me, and it took me three days to to retrieve my account, which is an abs- absurd way to manage uh, their social media. How do you, like, what is your recommendation? How do you manage basically the accounts of other people without risking to get into security problem, uh, etc., etc.? If if there is a way, do you think there is a way? I have three phones. Like, I look like a drug dealer. (laughs) 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 Because you can only log into so many accounts on one phone. And I don't like logging out and logging back in because that just, it's a pain when the, like, the owner of the company has 2FA on it. So then you have to text them and be like, hey, can I get my code? And then wait. And then say they're eating lunch and they text you an hour later with the code. And the code's already expired, so you have to ask them again for a code. And do you think actually this, right, do you think, just a question because you're you're an expert in in the, the field essentially. Like, because in re- what I noticed, for example, which is it's still a paradox, you know, people, they start to travel, they share accounts, they have people, actually Instagram recognized that there are people who are actually, you know, they're, they're doing this like you for a job. Why do you think this problem exists? Or do you think, the reason why I'm asking, because I might add it as an article, or I might ask the same question. Uh, might be asked the same question. Like, do you think this problem is just gonna stay like this, or there will be options in the future? <coughs> this well, to... like, you already get, like, I use the Meta Business Suite to manage a lot of clients' accounts to do double posting when I don't want to log into their Instagram, and so I have, like, I get access to their Facebook account, and I, um. So I have the Meta Suite and I use it on desktop and I'm able to go through and Meta's actually done a lot of work to make it so that you can actually scroll through your Instagram feed on desktop on the Business Suite dashboard. And I think a lot of the issue comes in with like getting an account banned when you have multiple people on it is when 
say if Liam was on the Triba Instagram and I was on the Triba Instagram and we were both liking and commenting on things simultaneously, you'd get flagged for, you know, that'd be kind of conflicting actions and they might think you're a bot. Because if he's liking and commenting and I'm liking and commenting and we're on two separate threads, then you're liking at a higher ratio than what's considered normal. But so I've this, never had an account ban. Yeah. I mean, I know the technical answer to your question, MA, is you just, like, whitelist an IP and then it'd be cool. But uh, the, the that's why I like Twitter better because they give you an API and you can just, you know, you can build on it, right? Like, you can't really build on Instagram other than just you, the tools that Facebook gives you, so... Yeah, which they are building on, but you end up getting, I forgot what it's called, but it's like a specific business code, and you add that into your business suite, and that's what kind of like green cards you into their Instagram account and all of their engagement and all that stuff, but it depends on your role. It's like an analyst can only do analyst stuff, and a moderator can only look at comments or messages, I think. I'm usually admin role. Awesome. Um, yeah, Emma, I'm big on schedule, so we actually have to wrap up the stream. Uh, awesomely, um, what do you call it? Like explanation on the topics. Um, yeah, I I'm going to start using them a bit more on some of the clients I have. I have it on a bunch. I just haven't seen tons of success, but I didn't try it for a lot. So I'm going to try it a bit more, see if that also um i used to do what i used to, what you are doing and you have like a bunch of phones for the other clients i looked into easy solutions there's things called second account which is just like having a phone within your phone uh they're great they're fast and you can have like free instagrams on your phone which is where i currently have i have free instagrams and i'm probably gonna need four at some point um all on the same phone this way you don't have to look like a drug dealer <laughs> Um, anyways, everyone watching, thank you for, you know, being here. Um, we'll be here next time, same time next Thursday. Updates, more news, and yeah, thank you everyone for joining. Bye. Hey, that's stream wrapped. Everyone in Discord, thank you for being here. Ah, uh, Sam is going to have a call, so I think he's leaving too. Right now, not sure. Mm -mm. I'll probably do some co-working. <laughs> I gotta go let the animals out. I will be back. Well, take care. Emma. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Take care. <sighs> okay.